Hey guys, so today I'll be discussing and explaining a very important doctrine under environmental law that is the public trust doctrine. So, yeah, let's begin. First, let's discuss what is a trust. Under common law jurisprudence or, or a legal term, a trust is a fiduciary arrangement where a trustee holds assets on behalf of the beneficiary. And accordingly, in the context of, context of public trust doctrine, here, the trustee is the government who manages the property in interest of the public that is the beneficiary. The origins of this doctrine can be traced back to Roman times. According to the Institutes of Justinian, by the law of nature, these things are common to the mankind that is the air, water and the sea. Under Roman law, these resources were either owned by no one or by everyone. The two main important terms were res nullius and res communions. The Roman principles were based on the premise of abundance, but the modern doctrine is based on ecological interdependence due to the scarcity of resources. The origin of this doctrine can also be found in England through the Magna Carta, its constitution, where these sources are cited as precedent for the notions of common rights to navigation and fishing. While in USA, the landmark case, Illinois Central Railway versus Illinois, recognized by the Supreme Court of the United States, if title to the land held in public trust can only be granted when the grant does not impair public interest. Now I'll be explaining. Now I'll be explaining the implications of doctrine of public trust and its meaning in simple terms. These resources like sea, air, water have great importance in our life, and it would be wrong to make such resources a subject of private ownership. Based on a simple fact, the natural resources being a gift of nature should be freely available to everyone. The doctrine enjoys upon and can be understood in a simple sentence that public at large is the beneficiary and state as a trustee is under a legal duty to protect the natural resources. The doctrine serves the following purposes. First, it mandates affirmative action for effective management of resources. Second, it empowers the citizens to question the government if it does not effectively manage the resource. Third, it can be used as a leverage during policy deliberations. And lastly, and the most important one, that the courts can use it as a tool to protect the environment from any kinds of degradation. Next, I'll talk about Professor J. L. Sachs, who is considered one of the greatest proponents of modern public trust doctrine. His article, that is the Public Trust Doctrine in Natural Resource Law, Effective Judicial Intervention, is considered an authority. And it lists down three types of restrictions that are imposed on government through the Public Trust Doctrine. The first being that the property is subject to trust, must not only be used for public purpose, but must be available for public use. Second, the property may not be sold even for fair cash equivalent. Third, the property must be maintained for particular types of use, either traditional or some particular to that form of resources. Influenced by this article, many lawyers argued the famous Mono Lake case, where in 1933, in a battle to save the Mono Lake, the Supreme Court of California understood and interpreted this argument or the arguments laid down in the J.L. Sachs article that the Mono Lake has public trust values and they must be considered in any decision about lakes market. Similarly, the doctrine of public trust developed in India as well. And it has been held by the Supreme Court that this doctrine fosters a pollution-free environment and is a particle of Art Article 21, which is a part of right to life. Article 39b and Article 47 lay down that it is the duty of state to protect and improve the environment and safeguard the forests and wildlife of the country. Hence, the constitution has positioned the state as a trustee which is required to protect and improve these resources for public at large. But this doctrine did not come to the forefront till this landmark case that is M.C. Mehta versus Kamalnath was decided by the judiciary. So the brief facts of the case are that the state government of Himachal Pradesh granted lease to a land to build a hotel on the banks of the river Bees. A newspaper article alleged that the motel management interfered with the natural flow of the river in order to divert its course. 
Supreme Court initiated a sumo to action based on the newspaper article. And the Supreme Court judgment was that the public does doctrine primarily rests on the principle that certain resources like air, sea, water, and forest have great importance of people as a whole, and it would be unjustified to make them a subject of private ownership. The court observed that these forests and these resources are not to be exhausted by any fun generation, but every generation owes a duty to all succeeding generations, and thus the public trust doctrine is a part of the law of land. So what we saw was the development of public trust doctrine from Roman times to the British to the US Supreme Court and then to the Indian Supreme Court through a landmark case. It is highly important to recognize that this doctrine is a highly useful tool for the judiciary to protect and preserve the environment from arbitrary and misuse of governmental authority. These days, influence of private actors in, is increasing globally. There is, is a high chance of misuse of natural resources or grant of these resources in favor of private players by the government. And in such cases, the doctrine of public trust would work as an effective check of exercise of power by the government regarding the dealings and management of natural resources. So what we have realized is this doctrine emphasizes on the public use of environmental resources as from the as it can be inferred from the Justinian times that these resources are either of no one or for everyone. That's it from my side. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you.